Hello everyone, welcome back to the Throw Pink Women's Team Championship driven by Innova Discs. We are back here at the beautiful North Cove Disc Golf Course in Marion, North Carolina. Ace from Productions bringing you this coverage. I am Felix. And I am Conrad. Conrad, we're back for this final round. What can we expect to see from this team championship? So we are here back again playing River Run, uh, but this time we have two different teams at the top vying for the lead. We still have the same format, but this time it's the final round and everything is on the table. Hole one, we have a part three coming in at 219 feet. You have this OB bunker on the right. You also have a stream running the entire length of the hole on the left that is OB. The car path itself does not play OB. You basically just want to throw a a shot that gets past the car path approaches in the green area so that hopefully your teammate can tap out for the birdie. <laughs> Already having a good time before the first disc is thrown. <laughs> Make it a little confused there. She was uh, practice putting. <laughs> while everybody was giving their fist bumps there. Tennessee Tornadoes starting off here with a one stroke lead. And they do have another team on the chase car that is also five down. Yeah, that's Sarah Cunningham's uh, team and Lisa Warner on that team as well. Well, Golden Girls just step up and deliver. Yes. Hannah with a beautiful forehand there, putting them in a good position. We'll see the Hannah's a uh, rather quick player when it comes to getting on the tee box. Mm -hmm. She does all of her thinking beforehand. Michelle Green just right into that bunker there, unfortunately, but they are okay as they have one safe up button. <laughs> as they're rocking out to the Golden Girls theme songs they were teeing off. Oh, just a little low on that putt. Team Captain Megan there. We see Victoria. Ooh, and just a little low as well. I don't mess up her last name. Griffith? There's, there's, there's a lot of T's and H's there for Victoria's last name. <laughs> get the birdie nice putt there by amber meese whose duds play fpo um we actually saw her playing fpo at a different event mm, you can hear that thunder in the background oh that's right we were under threat of rain pretty much this entire final round tornadoes extending the lead by two strokes now We come into hole two, another par three at 250 feet, a slight uphill gradual grade here from the tee, but it is really just a straight shot on Heiser on the right hand side past these two trees here on the right. There's also the forehand line up the gut and slide slightly wide to your left hand side into a rocky green here. That big rock that we flew over there is about 28 feet or so from the pin, gives you an idea of where these women want to land. It was also, it was, <laughs> it was a very sunny, like overcast day, but it was also just really hot for the second round. It's a beautiful shot. They're getting through and giving them a look for the birdie. Golden Girls were talking a little strategy about uh, hitting the backboard, hitting the rocks as a backboard. Ooh, that right there is flipped up and it's gone straight. It's a little deep of the uh, pin there. Yeah, beautiful flight there for Amber. Mm hmm. But through one of those straight discs, nobody, why would you throw a straight disc? They're, they're discs that go straight in disc golf? It's new to me. <laughs> oh, look at this flex on his forehand. Oh, yeah. Megan oh, wow. finally the line. 
Uh, we can't see it, but that has to be like bullseye. There's no way that it's not like under the basket. She puts a little flex on that too. Comes out on Annie and oh, yeah. it's up there by the rocks. And they have two options uh, looking down at the pen for another birdie. Yeah, Megan and Victoria getting a redemption on this hole. They were talking about how bad their shots were during the first round on this hole. Nice putt, one and done. Don't need a teammate. Puts them up two right now, two birdies. Yeah, Megan absolutely parked that shot there, and they will walk away with the birdie as well. Nice star frame. Mm -hmm. Hole three is a par three coming in at only 174 feet, but the obstacle here is not the distance. It is the control. We see we are playing to a highly elevated basket. You would prefer to be on the high side or the right side of the basket to give yourself more of a level putt than being on the low side and exaggerating the already steep angle that you're gonna have to approach the basket. We'll see what the ladies do here. Forehand and backhand are both viable options. Tornado still holding on to the tee here. Swinging it out. Oh, yeah. There's that control. That was beautiful there. So does that give her the green light? Is she going to go for it? Is she going to ace run it? Well, it looked like she sent it with some purpose there. She was not laying up, so. Yeah, Donna making a good bid there. And Hannah again just steps right up and delivers a oh, picture wow. right perfect for him. Right there at the rocks. Mm -hmm. I put it in, Michelle. Oh, the team gave Michelle the green light to put it in. Go to your hole. Whoa! <laughs> so she sent it. <laughs> <laughs> she definitely sent that. Absolutely. Is that a pure? That is a pure. Hey. Center of the basket. Nice birdie there for the tornadoes as they are turkeying it up. Three for three to start. Absolutely. All right, and yet another star frame with both of the teams taking birdies. Mm -hmm. Seeing why they're on the lead card here for this final round. We come to hole four, par three, 237 feet, and a tricky hole. It is a straight shot, but it does have some movement left to right and then finishes slightly right to left. These trees that we're flying through now will be a little bit more full, so the gap will look a little smaller. There's an out of bounds creek area on the left-hand side. This little catch-all here in front of the basket is not out of bounds, but it can provide some tricky footing for you to get a birdie look here. I know we don't often call this, but I think there's a tree bunker right there on the green. Uh, if you continue going too far to the right. There is. During the first round, we saw some of the ladies uh, end up in that general area. Yeah, and once you get in there, you just have to go around. There's no way going through. So it's basically a stroke penalty if you end up behind it. Amber looked Ooh. like she got caught there on the end of the tee pad. She went just a little too straight. It was turning, but it, it went too straight before it started to turn to the right. Yes. Oh, yeah, she puts a good move on that. That'll at least give them a look at a birdie. Yeah, Megan Goldsby there, putting it right where you want to be in the middle. Oh, wow. oh, you're flexing one up the middle. Gets it even closer. <laughs> Another hole that they 
<laughs> didn't play as cleanly during round one and definitely making up for it and making the proper adjustments here on this final round. Beautiful touch on that little forehand approach here, giving Donna the green light to try to go through. Oh, these yeah, trees. she tried to go for it for sure. Yeah. And that's what you're supposed to do. It's, it's different playing this format because um, it's not traditional. Ooh, Holy good bid shit. just right off the front. It's not the traditional doubles because it's alternating, but it's alternating teams. So it's like two other people taking the shot as well. But like you are trying to set up your teammate in the best possible. Ooh best possible way that put just being a little short not having the go-go juice to get there good putt there by Amy Cancer and Megan with just this short little some style points there oh, yeah tapping in the par it's a tricky hole to get even though it's 237 it provides a challenge, especially this time of year with those trees being nice and full. Last time we filmed that hole, it started to snow. It did. Hole five is another part three coming in at 206. Again, the distance is not the struggle. It's these two mandos that you have to hit. So you have to go through this tunnel, avoid the trees, and somehow park the hole so that your teammate can tap in for the bird. That's the plan. Let's see who can execute. Do have a bit of a backstop there also. That has made the mandatory. So getting another green light. Mm -hmm. So share is through Donna. Making it through as well, but a little late kick there on the tree. Yes, Michelle. Yes, Michelle. Michelle Puring. Oh, yeah. Just getting down there. So off to the left, but she should still have a look at saving a bird. Oh, wow. Yeah, putting some juice on that forehand and going along left. But. That may be an option. We'll have to see how clear of a shot they have from there. Yeah. All right. Amy so the close. Tennessee Tornadoes have one part and green light for another. Amber getting it wide. Oh, uh, yeah. It had, the, it had the juice to get there, mm -hmm. but just a little wide. Oh, yeah. Look at how close that is. That's 15 feet, maybe. Probably closer than that. Talking nicely to the basket. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> and the Golden Girls are going to get a stroke back here. Bringing it back to a one-stroke ball game. As we head into some tricky holes coming up here. Hole six, a par three, 367 feet making out of this tunnel. Here is the first job. You have this out of bounds lake, pond, body of water. And then you have a peninsula green here across the water with out of bounds behind it as well. Most teams are gonna lay up to just short of that cart path and then go across here. Although if your partner is safe, we could see some potential bigger shots trying to get to the peninsula green. Megan with the forehand. It's coming in a little hot, but it stops short of the pond, body of water, lake, <laughs> the ocean. Yeah, she pushed it about as far as you want to go. That's a rip. Ooh, that's going for it. That is all, but it's. Oh, no. It's, Ooh. That is wet. Not a bounce there. That's got a little bit of juice. Oh, Whoa, that's too wow. much juice. Yeah. 
I wasn't sure if she was going for it. That looked like a layup. But it did. It just got away from her a little bit. And that looks like it's coming a little fast, too. Settle. It skips. Then. No, and Amber's gone out of bounds as well. So Don and Cher here will have to place their mark, and they will be playing their third stroke from there. Nice safe upshot behind the basket. Yeah, trying to give it a bit there. Yeah, if it had a little any on it, it may have uh, turned that way. Let's see what Cher can do here. She is up first for her team. It took a kind of awkward stance, but I guess they didn't want to give up any ground moving back. Yeah, they could have gone further on the line of play because of the out of bounds. This mm -hmm. looks fantastic. It does. Right, right behind it. Great line there. Nice shot by Donna. Megan dropping in another putt there for the par. And this is going to be another stroke game here. We're going to have mm -hmm. a tie ball game. Absolutely. Things are heating up. There was definitely a little bit of a different energy. There's still like the fun aspect and everything, but this is the final round and that competitive juice is kind of starting boiling over a little bit during this round. Hole seven, another part three coming in at 320 feet. You want to play across this open fairway, not knowing exactly what, if any wind is out there as you approach this heavily guarded green with guardians all around, you just have to find your gap and, and get in there and then hopefully the rocks will treat you nicely and not damage the disc and leave you with a putt. It's a hole where you can make it on the green and still get a bad result. Yeah, flex in the forehand. She's in that left side gap there. Keep yeah. going, keep going. Oh, that's kick. all the way in there. Whoa. Yeah. I want to say that it looks like that's inside the circle. Mm-hmm. Sure. We see another forehand play here. That flexes, but that looks a little low, so it gets caught up in the grass and doesn't carry out its full flight. Yeah, they did cut the grass, but it's still very catchy. Donna, who's been just throwing shot after shot with precision so far, has done it again. A little bit of fade. Ooh, it drops. A little bit of wind drop there. But mm -hmm. They'll have an opening for a long toss in here. Amy Cantor first act. Ooh, great bid. Beautiful touch there and angle control on that approach. Mm -hmm. Amber looks like she's put it very close as well. It's a birdie look here for the Golden Girls. Ooh, oh, shot the right side. right side. This would really kind of cement that momentum that they've been building up over the last couple holes. Oh, and that one's off the band. There's a good amount of wind. <laughs> <laughs> she wants no excuses there. Good <laughs> for Victoria's like, It was just a bad putt. Now making sure that they're putting from the right distance here is going to be so confusing. There's a lot of distance to have to remember. Yeah. <laughs> a couple of pars for both teams. So no harm, no foul, no movement on the scoreboard there. Although since we don't have live scoring going on, they really don't know what the other teams are out there doing. Very true. Hole eight, a par four, 455 feet. A similar feel to hole six as you're coming out of a gap here into an opening and you're going across, once again, this creek bed to a 
green that's a little bit more sizable than the previous green. However, there's still some slope on the front of it that can play with you and put you in danger and possibly cause you to go out of bounds as well. Again, another placement shot leading to a possible birdie there. Goal one is to get out the tunnel and into the fairway. Megan has successfully done that. Victoria here can try to get a little more aggressive if she'd like. And Ooh, she turns that over. But oh, that flips off. Stable. Up yeah. Gets a little further out. So you're going to have different lines of, of attack that, for them to choose from. Mm -hmm. Flipping up and going left, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It opens up the hyzer a little bit for you. Mm -hmm. There's still gaps from that way. You don't really get to where you pinch yourself off unless you go really, really close. And we're taking that same line, pushing a little bit more ahead, mm -hmm. cutting off some distance there. Sure, you're going with the hyzer up over the top. And that unfortunately Ooh. is out of bounds. Mm -hmm. Donna going to come in clutch once again. And oh, park boy. it. Yes. So steady. I'm taking a long hyzer route right around oh. and parks it as well. Oh yeah. Like is this the valet hole or something? Like everyone just uh just put it there. Yeah. Easy birdie putt there for Amber Meese to complete that hole for the Tennessee Tornadoes. And every hole trying to figure out whose yeah. disc is where. <laughs> Like, if you have one teammate, you can kind of try to start to remember their bag. But if, if it's if it's four of you. Yeah, there gets to be a lot of uh, shots and discs to keep track of. Another star frame for this, for both of uh, these teams. Right there is the third one for the front. Still a tie up at the top. Hole nine, our last hole for the front here is a par three coming in at 254 feet. All this area in front of the cart path plays as inbounds, but once you cross the cart path, all of the grass is now out of bounds and only the sand trap is inbounds. So uh, quite a role reversal from what we're used to when it comes to playing bunkered holes. Kind of got to turn your, your mind off from what it's <laughs> how you usually approach a hole like this. And that one stays OB. Mm -hmm. Show floating one out there on Heiser. And it trickle. trickles in. <laughs> now stay, stay in, stay in. Don't roll out. Okay. <laughs> You're going with the hyzer right to left and just short of the cart path there, playing the the safe play. Mm -hmm. Donna ripping one on hyzer here. Needs some skip. Gets the skip. Oh, oh but the grabby, grabby grass so keeps it from getting to the sand trap. So they're going to be out about probably about 210 or so, maybe, maybe a little closer. That one should be in the sand trap fine. And Ramiz here now with a chance to get it closer. No, oh, it doesn't get any closer than that. <laughs> <laughs> the throw in birdie for Amber Meese of the Tennessee Tornadoes. Let's see that on the run back. Just a nice hyzer approach. The line is there the entire time and just Crash. <laughs> and that was the meatiest part of the change that she could hit too. Mm-hmm. It's still on hyzer. <laughs> <laughs> like it never came off angle. <laughs> Long look here for Megan. Oh, oh, oh okay. <laughs> I thought it skipped off the rim. Well, it, it did. It, yeah, it grabbed the back edge and brought it back in. So yet another star frame for this feature card, this lead card. I'm sorry. 
Spectacular hole nine here for both teams. <laughs> With some drama and fireworks. That's how you close out a front nine. Oh, yeah. So there we see the tie at the top. Both teams right now currently at 10 down. Golden Girls making up that stroke to bring it to even. Thanks so much, guys, for checking out round two, final round, front nine. We will have the back nine of this final round coming your way next on Ace Run Productions. A big, big thank you to Sarah Nicholson and the entire Throw Pink crew for having us out for this event. Check out all the action. We've got a documentary from this round one action. There's just so much coming your way. And uh, we hope you guys are enjoying it. I want to say thank you to our Patreons, our Ace Runners out there, making sure that we are able to provide coverage like this, doing documentaries. Also, a thanks to the River Run staff. Nope. The North Cove staff for the River Run course.